You don't have a clue why I do what I do, but I do what I do just for you. For your freedom song to sing above the clouds and cruise at altitudes foreign to you. I wanna wipe the dust off your shoulders. Move the debris out of your pathway. May these poems blow southwest winds against the northeast tumbleweeds headed to cloud your dreams. I write to save the overdrawn from completely checking out, for the Norma Jeans to get lost in between Monroe tactics, for the practical and the unpredictable, for the dancers with no balance, for the five, six, seven, eight, hundreds of thousands of dethroned kings cooking up ancestral moans and rocks meant for smoking through broken antennas. I write to save the future teenage girls because what if I could change her direction? Writing with the blood of the neglected, writing through the stifled sinuses of the rejected, I am unprotected like a fertile to a ripened womb, tight and pregnant, holding capitalized secrets in lowercase print. It was a cold night in December when I saw a halo. It was hanging over a ballpoint pen. Poetry is my walk-in closet. Kick your feet up in my den of lyrical equity. I do the opposite of what is expected of me. I started writing to make sense out of the senseless. My five senses wouldn't let me miss this, but the ink went blank. So I put my tongue on the tip. And because I am a poet, I ain't been right ever since. I fear my own lyrical mortality more than my final casket lay. But once I get here, in this space, my own personal Pluto, this here plateau of poetry, the proven history of this violence is that I come alive up here so much that when you see me sitting, consider me in my post-mortem pose. Post-mortem prose lights out, everybody knows that dying is so easy, that's why I stay so pensick. And almost every time I spit, and you will literally see me spitting, I really hate it, but this is me living. Taking the breath I only get to engulf when I am with you, I guess you could say I wish we lived together. Shacked up and ringless, menage life, me, you, me, this stage. I don't need a mic for this. This is me, alive, full blown. That's why my poems be so long, cause I wanna live for more than three minutes most times. So never mind who can't get it or who ain't with it. Bullseye, you shot me, but you can't change who I am or alter the trail of my lyrical umbilical that leads to the lights of audience smiles. I get born again up here and I mean it. This is life up here. Who am I to not fiend for it? To lean forward to stand, hoping not to disappoint this time. Hoping to come alive by rhyme, to be totally honest, to be 100% true. And when I come alive on this stage, I am secretly hoping that I could bring life back to you, but you don't have a clue why I do what I do. But I do what I do, just for you. I am January York, born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana, in the Butler Tarkington area, 46208. I am a writer, a poet, a curator, a creative, and sort of an artivist in many ways. This is pretty much where I grew up. This is my grandmother's house, and to the right of her, my aunt's house. Oh, wow, okay. So I have spent many, 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 many days <laughs> yeah. in between these two houses causing ruckus and writing poetry. I love it, yeah. <laughs> poetry for me came in when I was about 14. I was dealing with grief. I had a stepbrother who was 17 when he was killed. He was shot like 20 something times. I remember going to his funeral services and seeing his face and his face having this, this amazing look of pain on it I, that I can still see today. But I did not know what to do with what I felt about what I was looking at, about what happened. It was just me and my thoughts and my grief. And I just started writing poetry. My grandmother's patio was a place of just communion, of gathering, of love. She had these long nails, the cigarettes, she'd just be out here smoking with her legs crossed, just talking about anything. What was that like having not just neighbors, but family so close? I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And the older I get, the more I miss it. And then shortly after that, Jessica Care Moore started winning Showtime at the Apollo, doing poetry, doing spoken word. And I remember seeing her do that poem and the audience giving her like this standing ovation and then her winning over the well, singers. Yeah. 
Showtime at the Apollo was the last place you would think a spoken word artist would win, but she won yeah. and she won again and again and again. I remember sort of being like, huh, poetry on the mainstream. Right. But it still didn't connect to me that that was something that was here, mm. that was available for Indianapolis kids. Yeah, yeah. Until senior year, I took a summer school English class. Just like today, it was just a lot of violence. It was a lot of young black kids, youth, just getting gunned down everywhere. And I didn't even know a lot of them, but I still would feel like this pain about it. And I wrote about it in school and I would just get A's, A's, A's. And that was it. I stayed in the upstairs all the time, just there were piles and piles of books all over the floor. And I used to go through the books and find what book had black people in it. Really? And I would take those books and sneak them home. And I still have my, and still I rise, Maya Angelou book that oh, I wow. got from oh, up cool. there. Mari Evans and Etheridge Knight, who are both legendary poets from Indianapolis, were big parts of the black arts movement. So I was growing up when this movement was still alive and thriving. There was art to expose me to, yeah. but nobody exposed me to it. So what I did not receive, I take the responsibility of making sure that kids today get an opportunity to receive it. One of the sixth grade students that I spoke to a few days ago, I was taking questions and it was time for their class to be over and one young lady didn't get a chance to get her question asked. Mm. So I told her when everybody's turning in their stuff, just run over here and I got you. Yeah. So she came over to me and she was like, does writing poetry help you deal with your feelings and make you comfortable with your feelings? Man, this is some, what a this question. Is, this is a child asking me. Wow. A question. And there's, there's, think how much is packed in that question. Exactly, you know exactly. This is a young black girl. She is probably dealing with God knows what. Right, right. Even in the sixth grade. So, how horrible would it have been for her to miss the opportunity to ask that question? Yeah. Actually walked with her to her lunch period. Oh, really? Just to answer her question. That's awesome. And tell her how life-changing and life-saving poetry has been for me and how it can be for her. I asked her if she wrote, she said she did. And I felt like when we parted ways, she had an answer that she needed. I believe you told me that you were doing some work with social justice and with also just working with the media justice system. Yeah. So t tell me more about that. Yeah, so I have my undergrad in criminal justice. Right. I have my master's in positive psychology. So you see, like, <laughs> you see the pot just mixing here of like all the elements of yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. And so I tend to throw poetry and art in that pot and I make the best gumbo that I could possibly I, make I, out of my life. That's with great. Because that's, that's exactly what needs to be done. I am a part of an upcoming cohort actually called Poetic Justice that uses poetry and writing to deal with the feelings and thoughts of living in communities that are poverty stricken, violence stricken. When you live in these areas, and I live in one myself, it is traumatizing. Yeah, sure it is. When people see that nobody is willing to have these conversations, then they feel like they can't. This is tackling that silence and giving mm. the residents 15 weeks to write, to use poetry as a source of communication. Did you come outside of your house and there was yellow tape around the house? Like, mm -hmm. and you had to just go to work and act like nothing was going on. You had to answer the phone with a bubbly voice. You had to keep on going. You come home, there are people outside fighting. You have to go in the house and cook dinner and, and be on point for the kids and right. go to bed and wake up and do it again. Like, yeah, yeah. how do you feel? Stop, we need to talk about we this. We need to talk about yeah. this. You need to talk about this. There are human lives involved. It's yes. a neighborhood, it's a community, yes, and there's absolutely. family. Also, part of that project, we will be using a book that I created for my master's degree to graduate called Black Light. It's a book that uses poetry prompts and short writing assignments. It uses the concept of PERMA, 
which is a big concept in positive psychology, positive emotions, engagement, relationships, meaningful life, and accomplishments. I've read some of the book, and most <laughs> people need that book. Like, Thank it you. is so good. The intention is to help people, yeah. you know? Um, and I think just going through that workbook is like phenomenal. Like, Thank it's, you so much. Yeah, people need to pick that up. So, I appreciate that so much. How can people connect with you though and the book you wrote to, uh, you know, just following you? Yeah, I actually have two books, the mental health, well-being book, Black Light. I also have a book of poetry and essays called Nomad, N-O-M-A-D. Yeah. And it's available everywhere the bestsellers grow is what That's I've been right. saying, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on social media on Instagram at 40,000 feet up. You can go to my website, JanuaryYork.net, and kind of stay tuned for a JY situation. That's my tagline that I use when I put together events and stuff. I can still hear like the voices and it's just the people that was here talking or my grandmother's laughter or yeah. my mom pulling up and, and what y'all doing? My mom is the countryest woman from Indianapolis, Indiana <laughs> that she'll ever meet. This was the poetry in my world before I knew how to write poetry. I mean, what you're doing is powerful work, and I like, cannot thank you enough. Thank you. What you're doing, keep it up. I it's, will. It's creative and inspirational. Thank I've, you so I've, much. This has been so much fun. I appreciate it, and thanks for being part of my journey. <laughs>